funny. <coughs> Hello, this is uh, the third of my Tasman again. Continue uh, for lecture on chapter four on management information system class. And this chapter uh, titling the informa IT infrastructure, hardware, and software. Okay, I have uh, uploaded to the uh, model platform on this uh, chapter 4 PowerPoint material and also one more uh, MIS educational video clip on cloud computing. So you may uh, have it uh, assessed uh, later. Okay, let's uh, get started with our business. First of all, let's take a look on our learning objective. Uh, in this chapter, I'm supposed to enable you to understand the definition of uh, IT infrastructure and also describing those its uh, components that make the IT infrastructure works. I am also supposed to uh, be able to make you identify and describe the stages and technology drivers in IT infrastructure evolution from the uh, olden days in 1930s and 40s up to this new millennium year 2000. Okay, uh, you should be able to assess contemporary computer hardware platform trends as far as what hardware makes it uh, the IT uh, infrastructure uh, performing. So you should be able also to pretty much assess the computer temporary software, uh, its platform and its strength, its trends of uh, development. And you should be able to somehow evaluate uh, the challenges, the difficulties, the obstacles, and the success factor in managing IT infrastructure, including its uh, management solution. Okay, so let's take a look on uh, as simple as uh, IT device like uh, your smartphone. This smartphone is, uh, is it merely a phone or is it a, com a computer or is it uh, an appliance of computing device so it depends on how you take a look on this simple device this could be a computer and this could be also a, a basically a, a comprehensive uh, uh, computing devices I would say okay these are what uh, this chapter is all about okay prior going through into the contents of the uh, IT infrastructure hardware and software let's do some reflection on the existing uh, IT infrastructure that has uh, very much influenced our daily life the quality of life and uh, the way we live nowadays okay let's take a look uh, on grab uh, <coughs> uh, uh, chartering system okay or in other words a grab car okay i believe uh, many of you or most of you may have already uh, experienced uh, taking a grab car okay so how come a grab car uh, could be so successful and dominant until it is almost replacing the traditional old uh, taxi in our country so what makes this enable or what makes this possible this has been made possible uh, partly or mostly is due to the IT infrastructure and its uh, communication broadband uh, speed. So uh, Grab uh, is a successful company in the Southeast Asia and also in uh, many parts of the world. And Grab uh, was actually founded in Malaysia by Anthony Tan. So subsequently, uh, they uh, moved the headquarters to Singapore and now it is a Singapore-based company. So uh, what makes uh, Grab success? Uh, I would say it is uh, predominantly influenced by the reliable IT system, uh, strong computing power, and also communication uh, broadband, which is uh, performing uh, excellently well. And uh, <clears throat> on overall uh, <clears throat> grab company it employs about 2000 workers in the uh, in the whole region of Southeast Asia including Malaysia Singapore Thailand Philippines uh, Indonesia and you name it and it uses uh, advanced uh, computing technique for example uh, cloud computing uh, data warehousing uh, smart networking 
and it also includes uh, using Amazon's uh, Redshift uh, technology uh, and also uh, Elastic Cache as far as uh, data, cloud, uh, data cloud storage technology is concerned. So in order to uh, enable Grab to be successful, uh, I would say, uh, chartered car company, so there are many aspects of IT that has been incorporated. And of course, recently to uh, enable easy payment, so Grab has signed a memorandum of understanding with Lipo, Lipo Group for uh, e-payment uh, platform or e-platform uh, for electronic payment technology. So it has been uh, even easier for a uh, customer who would make the payment uh, currently by integrating the e-payment platform by using a Lipo system. Right, so those are part of the reflection of how does technology infrastructure has very much influenced our lifestyle, our quality of life. I would say it is significantly positive and moving uh, into the right direction. Okay, bottom line is, uh, what does infrastructure uh, in IT uh, mean, and what are they consisting of? Basically, IT infrastructure is uh, made of a set of physical devices, uh, for example, a server, a router, switches, terminal, or perhaps uh, some mainframe computer, and that integrate together uh, with software, and it operates in such an integrated manner so that it can deliver the whole performance of IT infrastructure. So, on the... Uh, on the firm uh, wide services that uh, being served by the infrastructure, infrastructure, it could be a computing service platform, a telecommunication service like Skype, uh, Google Me, those are telecommunication services, data management like a database uh, by using uh, SQL databases because Every time you access a website, for example, like Shopee or Amazon, you are using a database management service. Application software, you name it. So there must be application software that uh, uh, you are using, for example, uh, Microsoft or, for example, Google. So those are apps, application software services available within the IT infrastructure. Physical facilities management, like the IT uh, room or IT uh, I would say center, it's IT management, the training, the education, and other complementing services. So I would say those are made, uh, making up for good IT infrastructure so and that enable us to uh, live comfortably nowadays in the era of Industrial Revolution 4.0 and the Internet uh, era. Okay, let's take a look at, say, uh, e-commerce platform online like uh, Amazon. So Amazon has been a very successful company as far as uh, online e-commerce platform. Okay, together with, for example, uh, Alibaba, Shopee, Lazada, and so on. You know, right? So as, as the case for Amazon, it is supported by many data centers and at their data centers there are many servers and inside that server there are many pro, uh, processors or microprocessors right so as far as amazon is concerned their data centers is basically totaling up about 350000 processor there are there are a lot of number of processors uh, around the world uh, in their data centers okay so amazon uh, strive uh, to be a world-class company uh, as far as uh, serving its customer. So that is their IT services infrastructure. So they uh, try to attain a good customer services, uh, supplier services, and also serving enterprises in their cloud uh, computing platform. So by that, they must have an excellent business strategy. So they must uh, be at the forefront of computing, at the forefront of uh, perhaps uh, in as far as investment in the IT infrastructure, network, server, uh, communication band, and so on. So Amazon has a very strategic IT approach, right? 
So you must have a good vision and good strategy to champion this IT infrastructure. For example, Amazon Web Services, uh, AWS, that uh, hosted many of cloud computing platform nowadays uh, with many business uh, subscription. Of course, IT is the hardware and the software itself that drive the Amazon uh, online uh, service to be successful. So this is how they are very much interrelated. In order to have excellent service, you uh, it must be supported by the infrastructure and the uh, services uh, application itself, supported by uh, appropriate business technology in uh, uh, embedded with excellent IT strategy in terms of vision and mission, and incorporated uh, uh, state of the art or latest uh, IT technology into your whole IT infrastructure. Okay, let's take a look on how uh, it looked like uh, IT infrastructure in the olden days. Perhaps uh, we could say after the World War II, 1945, or uh, slightly later 1950s, the uh, world uh, of communication has uh, become very much more developed or modern. Uh, for example, in the 1950s, uh, IBM, International Business Machine, uh, was among the first who developed uh, mainframe, which is an independent computer, which in those days uh, was normally uh, uh, used at banks, uh, marketing company, normally big companies. So uh, mainframe, it looks like this, okay, in this uh, black and white uh, picture. And in those olden days, data or information, they are kept in the tapes like this. It's, this is a tapes. Instead of nowadays, uh, you back it up uh, in the hard disk or uh, even uh, bigger uh, storage in the data center. So these uh, 15 and 60s are the decades in which uh, the uh, majority of a computer operation is, uh, bas was basically run under a mainframe. Mainframe is a uh, well-known mainframe uh, manufacturer in those days is, was IBM and DEC, Digital Equipment Corporation. Okay. Moving on into uh, the next decade in the 80s, uh, we would say that if uh, in the 60s, computers uh, were normally used by big companies. So the, this era in the 80s, they start uh, personalizing computer towards for personal usage, for students, for professors, or for individuals. So in 1981, uh, IBM personal computer was introduced uh, uh, in the market. So it is basically a standalone computer with a, with a single processor and with its own monitor, and you can uh, run application like uh, uh, WordStar, uh, or WordPerfect, in those days, uh, those are the uh, popular, I would say, microprocessor replacing uh, by Microsoft Word nowadays. So uh, these are the era for personal computing in which individuals can have their own uh, computer. Uh, moving on uh, into the uh, subsequent years in 1980s, uh, computers start to be based on the network called client-server. So in which uh, uh, companies, uh, normally organizations, they have a server and this server uh, is basically connected to many terminals for the employees to be used so that em employees within the companies or employees within the organization can have their own terminal and they are connected to server uh, to assess the uh, needed software or application. Okay, there you go. So in uh, in the recent decades, in 1990s, for example, okay, uh, the computing uh, era has been moved towards the enterprise level. Enterprise level means that at this uh, company or organizational level, for example, by have, having ERP system, enterprise resource planning, or MRP uh, material uh, planning application. So it goes to the uh, enterprise level, okay, in which this enterprise has their own server and it is connected to the internet and uh, that internet connection are connected to the other branch of company or the other subsidiary so that they can work as a integrated enterprise uh, computing network. 
Okay, moving on into the new millennium, year 2000, and uh, in the uh, today's uh, technology development, we are mo uh, moving very much toward resource sharing, okay, in the form of like uh, cloud computing and mobile computing. Cloud computing, uh, uh, like in the form of Gmail or G Drive, those are uh, an example of cloud computing uh, network. Mobile computing, if you are using like uh, Google Map or Waze, those are mobile computing applications, which is very much uh, fastly growing uh, in uh, current uh, new millennium. Okay, what are the most uh, uh, recognizable 10 brands in the world? Okay, for example, uh, by this survey, uh, it is su uh, suggesting that Nike, Apple, uh, Google, Amazon are among the top brands that easily recognizable around the world, okay? including Microsoft. So those are very much uh, big companies that apply or invest heavily in their uh, IT system, their infrastructure network, uh, and also cloud uh, computing uh, base. So as such, they can become a uh, very a very noticeable brand in the world uh, as a world-class brand. Okay, just now I have uh, taken a look, uh, take a, I would like a summary on the development of the IT infrastructure. In the 1960s, it is basically this era in which all uh, terminals are connected to a mainframe or mini computer. In the 80s, it is very much based on the these uh, terminals uh, by uh, all employees use their terminal and connected to a server and in the in the 80s very much uh, our server terminal are connected into a local area network uh, whether it is uh, wire based or uh, bluetooth uh, connected uh, this is for the purpose of shared resources in which people could share for example, uh, one software like Autodesk, and it can be used by architects and structural engineers uh, if it is parked at the server, and uh, many related employees could uh, use the same software. In the fourth era, uh, very much in this uh, current present time, very much we are in this kind of network in which we are interconnected by server and internet. Right, and all the employee terminal, either mobile or PC or notebook, connected to the uh, internet through the company's network, so that you can easily access a company application from anywhere in the world and anytime uh, if you are working globally. So, <clears throat> Oracle database is uh, one of the a good uh, world-class database that many uh, worldwide uh, company using it. So, and nowadays in the latest era, which is based on cloud computing, uh, we are very much interconnected uh, in terms of resources by uh, through uh, the cloud platform. Okay? For example, uh, Google Drive or Amazon uh, Web Services platform. Those are the current IT infrastructure stage that we are uh, having right now. Okay, at the single layer uh, <coughs> architecture of IT infrastructure, we have uh, something like this. This is the most common layer that uh, many companies has. So, for example, we uh, <coughs> take a look in the case of Amazon.com. So, Amazon.com is basically having uh, is a very large data center which is housing their web server. Right, and this web server is of course connected into the internet. Internet is basically a network of networks of computers and it uh, links to client with a PC, terminal, mobile. So these are client, which is you and me. So in order to purchase a product uh, at Amazon, like uh, books, so you got to access to the, uh, your device and then uh, access to the World Wide Web uh, internet. And then it goes to Amazon web server and later it goes to perhaps purchasing uh, their, uh, I would say, books. And later uh, it will access to the sales, accounting, and uh, also have payment records uh, and interacting with the database. 
and normally database uh, is hosted by Oracle or SAP and it interact with your purchase and subsequently uh, you decided what item to purchase and make the payment and Amazon makes the arrangement for the uh, product to be sent logistically to your address. So this is what they call a multi-tiered client server network or N-tier. So this is N-tier because this is tier 1, tier 2, tier 3, tier 4 and tier 5. This is five tier uh, client server network okay as highlighted in the case of amazon okay so in it infrastructure uh, basically uh, what governs the development and the evolution of it infrastructure uh, was uh, mooted by uh, moore's law moore's is a scientist uh, who in, I would say uh, one of the pioneer uh, invent, uh, inventor of microprocessor, so at Intel. So com, uh, Moore's law says that uh, every one year and a half, computing power doubles. Right? For example, from uh, for 40, 40 gig, okay, uh, or uh, be, becoming 80 gig, uh, uh, I would say that is as of storage. Uh, computing power doubles every one year, uh, one year and a half or eighteen months. Okay, because the number of transistors uh, that is m edge or embedded into the microprocessor also become bigger and bigger. So, if uh, now uh, the speed is, uh, for example, perhaps uh, 20, uh, uh, 20 uh, gigahertz. Okay, it will easily double to 40 gigahertz by the next year, uh, uh, by the next 18 months. So law of uh, mass uh, digital storage, uh, we could see that our storage from year to year become bigger and bigger, right? If you have uh, one terabyte of storage, it is easily uh, will uh, become uh, two uh, terabyte uh, in the next one or two years, okay? So those are the growth of uh, evolution of computing power and storage. Okay, this is a reflection of how uh, uh, I would say older computer uh, it was looked like. So this is uh, a computer basically named uh, ENIAC. Okay, ENIAC uh, was a computer developed uh, in the United States, and in the old days they have this uh, connecting cable, so mostly connected by. Uh, human uh, by these ladies. So this computer perhaps is uh, as good as your 8088 processor but the size is as big as this room. Okay, imagine the difference uh, with your computer nowadays on your palm of your hand in the name of smartphone. That is basically computer. Okay, Moore's law and uh, microprocessor performance. If you take a look in the olden days in the 70s, uh, and then 80s, 90s, and the new millennium. Basically, the number of transistors that they are packing uh, in the past, I would say, 30 or 40 years, uh, in those uh, olden days, only this uh, limited number of transistors, they can pack it up into a, a microprocessor. But nowadays, uh, you can pack it up as much as 2.6 uh, 2 billion transistor into this kind of single microprocessor right and your uh, processing power uh, by the unit of mips milli uh, instruction uh, per second uh, has grown up to 128000 milli instruction per second right so it has grown so big and it has uh, uh, embed so many type, uh, so many transistors into this single processor. The faster the microprocessor, the more transistors uh, that you need to be embedded inside it. Okay, so this is uh, a uh, physical example of a single transistor, right? And this is the electric schematic diagram of transistor. This one transistor, and you could imagine 2.6 billion. Uh, such transistor embedded into this single small microprocessor, perhaps as uh, big as uh, your thumb. Okay. Okay. Uh, actually, computer works uh, with uh, the uh, bit system, 
it is uh, it is working with one or zeros okay it is uh, either a current high or current of uh, high uh, or low high 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 low high low this uh, eight uh, eight bits is making up one byte right and computer works uh, based on one and zeros which is known as ascii code okay it is a computer uh, numbering system which is based on binary which is one and zero however human work with a uh, number system uh, we call decimal which is 10 11 65 and so on so from human numbering system we have to convert into this uh, binary one and zero numbering system in order to uh, enable computer to work for human okay what makes computer fast it is basically because they can process information at the speed of light right so that is uh, what is meant by uh, why computer can calculate so fast okay it is just alternating between one and zero sequence of uh, one and zero okay this is uh, just a glimpse of ascii table so by human number it is zero one two three four five six but by computer number it goes by this uh, 111111 uh, 1000 and for example number uh, 60 uh, if a human call it 60060 six zero, computer will calculate as uh, 111100 okay that is the computer number system in order for them to calculate but for human we work on decimal Okay, from uh, time to time, from years to years, from decade to decade, from the olden days in 1960s and up to uh, current million, uh, millennium. So the cost of chip, uh, the cost of semiconductor like this processor has been decreasing significantly. Okay, so I would say nowadays uh, microprocessor or chips uh, could be said at a very, very low cost in comparison to perhaps uh, 50 or 60 years ago so the cost has been decreasing significantly and the cost of data storage also has uh, become cheap right because uh, if I could remember when I studied in the United States in 1997 I had bought a hard disk it is just a 40 meg okay it will uh, cost uh, me uh, around uh, 100 US dollar Okay, but nowadays in the, in the new, new millennium, if you buy a 900 gig hard disk, it just uh, costs you uh, perhaps just 50 US dollar or uh, Ringgit Malaysia 180. So for, from uh, 450 to 180, that is almost a three time cost reduction uh, within just about maybe uh, <clears throat> 25 or 30 years. Uh, here we were last time when we stopped. Uh, we are discussing about Met uh, Metcalf's law and network economics of an IT infrastructure system. So Robert Metcalf proposes that the value or the power of your network grows exponentially as a function of the number of network members, which is like uh, y equal to to the power of n. For example, if uh, your uh, Facebook account uh, your Facebook, uh, say, has eight followers or eight members. So the value of your network actually equals to y equal to uh, the uh, power of n. So y, uh, so two to the power of n, which is uh, your member is eight, two to the power of n, uh, eight uh, equals to uh, 256. So the value of your network equal 200. 56. That is how Metcalf explained on the network's economy. Okay, so <clears throat> next, uh, we, we couldn't deny the fact that uh, from years to years, uh, as time passes by, we could say that communication costs and the internet uh, bill uh, is declining. So I would say that nowadays, uh, it is estimated uh, there are 2.3 billion uh, people uh, that are able to access internet uh, around the world 
And remember, uh, the global population nowadays is around two, uh, 7.6 or 7.7 .7 billion people in the whole world. Imagine <coughs> that if you have a business, uh, you develop apps that you uh, could market to the whole world, so your business or your apps could be sold uh, to almost 2.3 billion around the world because these are the whole market uh, uh, that is available for you over the internet. So that is a very big opportunity for uh, doing business uh, over the internet because so large market number here. Okay. So in recent years, Malaysian government, for example, last year directed uh, MCMC or uh, Malaysian Communication uh, Committee or SKMM uh, so that uh, it is directing the telecommunication company or known as telcos, for example, like Maxis, uh, Cellcom, DG and so on, so that they must double the speed offering uh, of internet to their customer. And at the same time, they must reduce half of the price this year uh, in comparison to next year. So imagine the uh, direction given uh, by the government so that to make internet faster and yet cheaper. Okay, so for example, if the speed of uh, internet, uh, for example, like uh, Cellcom uh, nowadays, at say 40 uh, Mbps, megabit per second. So by next year, they, ex they are expected to double the speed to 80 megabits per second. Okay, and yet at the same time, they must reduce half of the price. If this year the price is about like uh, 40 RM subscription uh, for certain package per year, right? Uh, next uh, year the cost must become RM uh, 25 ringgit for next year. So that is the emphasis given how the companies must reduce the cost and they must yet double the speed. Okay. Now, we take a look on the graph uh, relating between the number of years progressed by from 1995 to year 2010 and against the cost per kilobit uh, dollar uh, in terms of cost of data uh, communication. If we take a look uh, from year 1995 to year 2005, right, it is about 10 years. So at year 1995, uh, the graph says that it costs around $1.40 per kilobit data. Uh, kilobit means 1,000 bit data, costs uh, $1.40. But 10 years later, it merely, uh, in year 2005, it merely costs around perhaps uh, $0.20 cent dollar per 1,000 bit data. Right? As, as I had explained earlier, 8 bits equal to 1 byte. Okay, so this shows that the significant or drastic reduction of uh, just around 10 years from this uh, $1.50 level only up to uh, 20 cent or even at 2010, it is maybe around 10 cent or even 5 cent per kilobit data. So this shows that Decline of internet communication cost has been exponential, uh, which is declining exponentially. Just imagine like uh, 10 or 15 years ago, if you want to send data physically uh, by using Malaysia Postal Service, right? you send data report from Joe Baru branch uh, company to the headquarter company in KL. Uh, perhaps you send a uh, few pages of uh, physical report with a postal service then the stamp may cost you uh, perhaps with that um, middle size envelope uh, two uh, ringgit 50 cent for the stamp and send it to KL uh, maybe uh, the next day or the next two days your headquarters receive however in this current time you perhaps just need to uh, digitally uh, upload the uh, report to the Google Drive and instantaneously, your KL branch can read your report by accessing that respective uh, Google Drive. So the cost is almost, I would say, perhaps one cent or almost uh, zero, almost free, I would say, in terms of uh, the long-term uh, perspective. 
<coughs> class uh, we are talking about internet speed all right how fast we share data and let's take a look on this uh, global map as far as internet speeds and its cost around the world comparing many countries okay and this is the legend or the scale that it's comparing which is the lighter color uh, white or almost pink and later turn red this is the cheapest and fastest and this is the slowest and most expensive red so if you take a look on the globe uh, around many countries uh, we would say that uh, ITIF ranking on internet speed and cost all over the world ranking Japan as number one it means that Japan has the fastest speed interconnection in the world and it costs only around uh, 27 cent dollar uh, for their uh, data transfer right and uh, their speed is at uh, 61 megabit per second whereas Japan and the neighboring like Korea also double the price but still fast and comparing to the most expensive like in Mexico and Turkey okay so where is Malaysia so we are not in the map yet so it is out of the point for discussion okay <coughs> technology drivers in infrastructure and uh, in, uh, infrastructure evolution uh, we are able to share many documents from around the world easily and can be uh, sent from Malaysia and yet can be read uh, instantaneously in the US uh, because we have technology standard. Okay? We share the same platform, the same standard. For example, Microsoft uh, Word Processing, okay? like Microsoft Word, if I edit the document in Malaysia uh, for a journal article and I want to submit into a publisher in the US, they can easily accept my submission in Microsoft Word.doc and they can open it in the US and later uh, this, uh, uh, offset it, design it, and then integrate into the their journal publication easily, right? Because we say we share the same standard uh, system. Okay, let's take a look on the seven important uh, main uh, component uh, that make IT infrastructure ecosystem works. It is in the form of computer hardware, operating system. Uh, ERP, uh, DBMS, database, networking, internet platform for servers particularly and the uh, integrate, integrator of the system normally delivered by consulting firms like Accenture and IBM. Okay, this is the depiction of the seven components. Okay, first is like internet platform mostly supplied by uh, Unix or Cisco. Computer hardware mostly supplied by IBM or Dell. Operating system uh, predominantly supplied by Microsoft Windows, okay, uh, Android and Linux. ERP application normally uh, supplied by SAP or Oracle. Networking telecommunication uh, hardware normally supplied by Linux or Cisco. And DBMS and storage database and uh, keeping your data mostly supplied by IBM and uh, perhaps MySQL. And all these, these six components must communicate and integrate it together. Uh, and normally it is integrated by consultant from IT consulting firm, for example, like Accenture and IBM. So these are the uh, system integrator that integrate all these six components so that they can communicate and uh, in compatibility to work with each other. So if you take a look on this all service provider on each component, we could see that which company appear the most uh, frequent as far as the player of each component. For example, here you could see IBM, you could see Microsoft, and we can see still IBM here. Microsoft, IBM, Microsoft, Cisco. Okay, we could say that predominantly IT infrastructure ecosystem uh, uh, is influenced by IBM and Microsoft. So that is the true fact that we can see around us. Computer hardware and platform, either in the client machine form like notebook or PCs, server and mainframes are mostly run on uh, microprocessor and 
uh, major producer for microprocessor is Intel and AMD. So these are the main uh, producer for computer hardware. OS operating system, you will say at the server level operating system mostly run on Unix and Linux because perhaps it is open source and 35% of server run on Windows because Windows is based on uh, license. Okay. And at the price software application level, uh, mostly provided by SAP, German company, and also Oracle, uh, American software company. Well, if you take a look on the, uh, our smartphone, right, in terms of its operating system, I would say smartphone across the world, 80% run on Android, and perhaps nearly uh, around almost 20% run on iOS. However, recently we have a newer operating system by Huawei by the name of Harmony. So those are also a new strong contender in the operating system market domain. DBMS uh, mostly supplied by IBM and Oracle. Our storage like uh, hard disk normally uh, produced or supplied by Seagate or Western Digital. And definitely our storage and data from year to year increasing significantly and it is uh, proposed that for every three years our information that we keep as storage double every three years. As far as networking company is concerned, uh, companies that provide telecommunication services for example AT&T, uh, Maxis, uh, Cellcom, those are telecommunication company and network operating system, the hardware uh, normally produced by Cisco, Linux, right? So these are part of the hardware in network, mostly produced by big company like Lucent and Cisco. As far as internet platform concern, which is uh, referring to server, our server mostly run on hardware uh, produced by either IBM, Dell, HP. So these are the hardware uh, producer for servers. Okay, in the video clip previously, I have shared you on uh, Google Data Center. So you can have a closer look on the video of this uh, Google Data Center. So predominantly, it looks like this, all racks of IT device, IT equipment, cabling, and so on. And as I said earlier, all these six components of IT are integrated, uh, may, is made possible working together with by the consultant from the consulting integrated company like Accenture, and IBM uh, Consulting Service. I would say uh, currently IT job is in very big demand due to information age, due to internet era and so on and uh, companies like Accenture, Global, Infosys, they are all making good money and I would say uh, best job nowadays in the world mostly related to information system or IT. Okay, on mobile digital platform, smartphone uh, mostly run on this operating system like iPhone or Android. Okay. And what does grid computing means? Grid computing is a form of parallel distribution com uh, computing uh, platform in which your communication uh, and processing power is basically shared into a grid of interconnected network in the whole world. For example, Amazon communication power is distributed to 350,000 processors or 350,000 computers around the world. So that sort of interconnection is called uh, grid computing. Okay. And virtualization is also another uh, trend uh, nowadays in the IT uh, system in the form of uh, simulation uh, for training, for example. Uh, this is all enabled through the IT platform. Last but not least, one uh, hardware platform trend uh, development which is important is known as uh, cloud computing. So in which uh, enabling resources to be shared over a server which is somewhere 
in the cloud there and it is uh, shared so that many employees could access or use the same particular software without buying each one of them for everybody. So cloud computing is also a strong platform for Amazon uh, business model. Uh, they call it uh, by the segment of Amazon Web Services, uh, Google Mail, G Drive, uh, Google Meet and so on. Uh, it's all run on cloud computing platform, including Microsoft Azure. If you are using like uh, Dropbox or Gmail, definitely you are using this, uh, what is called uh, cloud computing uh, platform. In the uh, video clip folder at, at Modo MIS, I also uploaded uh, one new uh, video clip uh, pertaining to uh, cloud computing. Uh, maybe you can have a closer look uh, on the video later to have a, a better understanding on what does uh, cloud computing mean and how it works. This is the cloud computing diagram in which linking all the devices like server, desktop, tablet, okay, and it is uh, perhaps relating to your company and your company subscribe to platform services, for example, uh, to keep your email like Gmail, uh, your company also subscribe to database, uh, network, storage, so all these are in the cloud, right? It, is, it means that it is stored somewhere in data center in the US or in the Malaysia, in China. So all these data centers are, are incorporating or collaborating with each other to serve the subscribers like companies, you and me. So it means that a more efficient resource sharing for many people around the, uh, around the world through network and the internet. Nowadays, energy is a, a big matter, right? Green energy, conserving energy, uh, I would say uh, energy efficient equipment and so on. So the, the, the trend are moving towards green computing in which uh, you still execute your computing but you uh, you are using lesser power, right? Because to generate power, it needs a lot of resources. And as far as green, uh, green computing is concerned, you could see that if you buy new equipment, electronic equipment nowadays, they have a uh, star ranking of energy efficient like four stars or uh, five star. For example, you buy a new aircon and it is uh, rated as four star uh, aircon uh, unit because of its uh, energy efficiency, right? So it is moving towards uh, green computing. And I would say in any nation, like for example, in US, uh, at US, 22% of the power consumed by the United States mostly attributed to data centers usage consumption so that is very power consuming user as far as the data center uh, power consumption again open source software it means that it is uh, basically uh, free because that's why they call it open source in which programmer develops certain program and upload it into uh, linux plat uh, into a platform in which other programmer can use it for free. So that sort of open source sharing is very much promoting the integration of uh, IT devices as uh, this Linux operating system. Okay. Uh, software in the web, uh, mostly we use uh, programming language like Java. It is object-oriented programming. Uh, normally programmer use this language to integrate a software system right to make the software work and for websites uh, hypertext hardcap language html is another language that uh, be used to uh, develop website okay service oriented architecture well basically this is a part of in which uh, uh, an architecture uh, serve a software service to user okay for example, you based on subscription okay, in order to get the service. And this is how it is interlinking each other. For example, uh, a car rental company uh, hosted a website. And of course, this car rental company has a hosting server. 
like a central computer who hosts the request and also it is also linking into their older system uh, they are compatible to work each, uh, work each other and a uh, rental company like Dollar Rent in the US they have a strong interconnection with the airline, budget company, tour operating system, travel reservation and also web services site right so as such this all IT infrastructure enable Dollar Rent to uh, get their potential customer from here and that serve uh, their customer by using their IT infrastructure as far as renting, as far as uh, payment, as far as uh, delivering the rental car for uh, user and also taking back after it is being used. So it's all uh, by the means of IT infrastructure. Software, okay, and cloud services. Okay, uh, as far as uh, sources of software, for example, like uh, ERP software, uh, like SAP or Oracle, so these are sources of software we, in which we could see the expenditure or spending on software uh, from year to year, uh, from year 1990s to year new millennium 2011, and now basically total software spending are increasing at almost the rate inclination angle of 45 percent right and uh, a portion of that basically uh, due to outsource software expenditure in which you engage uh, IT service provider firm to maintain your software for example bank uh, they engage uh, IT uh, system uh, consultant from HP uh, to maintain their for example uh, financial equipment uh, at their bank Okay. Another portion of the total software spending belong to subscription at software as a service, for example, like Google Drive, or if perhaps you, uh, you subscribe to a particular apps and software like Powtoon, uh, those are basically SAAS. So you subscribe the software, pay subscri subscription as a service. Software outsourcing uh, is basically uh, consisting of uh, mesh apps and apps. For example, if you are using uh, Facebook and you personalize your Facebook account by uh, its features, so those features are basically category for mesh apps in which you personalize your <coughs> Google, uh, your Facebook account. <coughs> And bottom line is, how do we manage uh, this uh, IT infrastructure ecosystem? Who, who govern the IT and who manage the IT infrastructure? Like uh, in the whole world, basically, uh, IT infrastructure as far as internet uh, control is concerned, it is governed by this consortium of WWW, World Wide Web Consortium. So this consortium govern the internet or control the internet or manage the internet. However, your IT infrastructure, for example, your company or your organization like UTHM, normally it is managed by the servers uh, hosted at IT center, right? Uh, predominantly inside that uh, center, basically the database, the sequential query language and managing its content. So this is how to control and manage the IT infrastructure. So in other parts, uh, in order to use better uh, IT or software resources, it is better parked at cloud computing platform so that everybody could share the resources. Uh, the only need they have is to access to the internet. So in order to make uh, your IT infrastructure investment competitive, again, you have to uh, map it out against the market demand, firm strategy, uh, and make some assessment on your IT performance, including uh, some of them against the com uh, competitor uh, services, uh, and also uh, basically uh, related to your overall business strategy. Okay, uh, either you want to use Oracle or you want to use uh, you want to pack it under cloud computing. It depends on your organization, business strategy, vision, mission, and 
your IT policy. Okay, let's reflect that relationship towards the uh, competitive forces model for IT infrastructure, for example, UTHM. Our university has declared that uh, it is capable of being virtual campus. If so, uh, then the IT center must have a very powerful and efficient uh, enterprise system uh, to manage all these components. Uh, UTHM strategy, student demand, user demand, competitor, uh, the IT technology itself, uh, you need to use ERP system like Oracle in the IT center. Uh, you need to engage a fast and efficient IT service provider for telecommunication like uh, TM, Fiber, or Maxis Fiber, and definitely you need a fiber cabling interconnection to have efficient uh, data transfer and knowledge exchange among your business strategic levels. Okay, that will wrap up a lecture on uh, Chapter 4, IT Infrastructure, Hardware and Software. So let me reflect back uh, the LO, Learning Objective, that I have explained earlier. I think uh, I have defined the IT infrastructure as far as network, server, uh, interconnection, telecommunication and so on. I have uh, explained about identification and describing the stage of technology drivers and IT evolution, you know, from the 1960s, uh, from the ENIAC computer to the client server and later enterprise level and up to cloud computing. Assess the contemporary computer hardware platform, for example, uh, like the server by HP or by uh, Dell and so on. So, and uh, software uh, in terms of uh, enterprise hardware software. Uh, SAS, Software as a Service, and Evaluate, Challenge, and Managing IT Infrastructure in the form of who manage and govern IT infrastructure and the internet. So by that, I have uh, completed the uh, learning objective explanation. I hope you could benefit from my explanation and understand well. And that will wrap up my lecture for part two, Management Information System course, chapter four, IT infrastructure. Uh, thank you for your attention and uh, thank you for your participation and uh, patience following my lecture through the uh, YouTube platform. I would like to thank you again.